three, two, one. Okay, so, hi guys, Colsey, and this video is a review slash personal experience with this camera here, the Panasonic Lumix G7. Uh, I've been using this camera for a couple months, just to kind of get a feel for it. It's my newest, best camera. So this video is just gonna be really a review and my own personal experience of the camera, what I like, what I dislike, uh, what's good about it, what's bad about it. If you're interested in cameras or you're looking at this camera specifically, then maybe this video will be useful for you. Right, right now, I'm gonna move away from this mirror and go make a cup of tea and we'll continue the review there. Okay, so let's talk a little bit more in depth about the camera. It's a Lumix G7. It's like a, it's a compact camera. It's sort of a mix between a compact camera and a DSLR. So when I looked at a camera like this, what I wanted, I wanted 4K and I wanted to be able to have interchangeable lenses, which is something you normally get with a DSLR. The current camera that I used for my YouTube channel and vlogging and things was a small compact camera I believe it's a, I think it's a Nikon S9900 or something like that. It's a very, it's a nice little camera and it's good for doing little vlogs. But I wanted something a little better, something that could do 4K, something that had interchangeable lenses that you could get a more professional vibe from. So that's where I found the Lumix G7. So when I bought this, it was just after Christmas. I think I got it for about 450 pounds with two lenses, but that's not a bad price. Having had the camera for two months and used it on and off, I've used it in some of my videos that I've made uh, for just sort of talking to camera bits. You may have noticed that, you may have not noticed that. What's good about the G7? So, because it films 4K, obviously that means I can record videos in 4K, uh, which mean I can upload in 4K, which is just nice, it's another, it's like another step in video quality and video resolution, so it's higher than 1080. It also means it picks up a lot more detail, so you might be able to tell in some of those videos where I'm using this camera rather than, say, my webcam or a different camera, you'll be able to pick up a lot more detail in my face. Um, that's both good and bad. It's good to have more detail, but it's also bad because it makes me more self-conscious about looking at myself on camera. Anyway, I figured I wanted 4K because obviously that seems to be the way things are moving. Obviously resolution and things are always improving. A lot more 4K TVs are about nowadays. So at some point 4K will become the norm, I believe. So I wanted to get something that could do 4K to kind of future-proof myself. Again, I'm still gonna do vlogging and things. So having a flip around screen like this G7 has is very, very useful. It's the same as like my old point and shoot compact camera has. It has a, a, a flip out screen that rotates 180 degrees. So when you're vlogging, you can actually see yourself very, very well and be able to frame things a lot easier when you're vlogging. So the same is with this camera. Obviously this camera is, a li is like considerably larger than the little one I have. So you might not necessarily be doing like handheld vlogging kind of stuff as much, but it's there if you want it and it's good for being able to uh, rotate the screen if you're trying to get a certain angle or the camera's very low and you wanna be able to not have to crouch and hunch down and lay on the floor to be able to see the screen, you can rotate it so you can see it from standing. It's very, very useful and it's something that I wanted in the camera. I have been filming a little bit with it. Like I said, I've been doing a few videos with it. And since we're away on holiday at the minute, while I'm filming this, I've been trying to get out in the woods that are local and film a bit more, just footage, just video. Some footage that I can edit down uh, and put some music over it and just make it look nice. And just really play with the camera a little bit more, see what it can do. Um, so hopefully when this video goes up, I will also have that video up already. So if you wanna go check out that video, I'll put a link in the description where you can go check it out. And that's just basically, all it's gonna be is footage that I've shot with this camera in 4K. I'm gonna try and color grade it and you know make it look really nice and make it look like a really, as professional as I can make it look basically. This camera by no means is a professional camera, but for me, it's a step up from the little point and shoot compact I had. Like I said, I can have interchangeable lenses. This camera came with two lenses. I believe this one is a 14 to 42 millimeter lens that I have on at the minute. And the other one is a, I want to say 42 to 150 mil lens. Um, so learning a little bit more about lenses and stuff has been important to me when using this camera because obviously it's not something that I had to look into before. It was just like whatever lens the camera had was what the camera had, you couldn't change it. I like the fact that having this, you've got the body and then you stick a lens on it and it kind of creates a new camera. 
it's not a new camera, but when you compare it to something like a like a self-contained compact camera that has just a, a fixed lens, there's nothing more you can do with that. If you want more zoom, you buy a different you buy a different self-compact fixed lens camera with more zoom. Whereas with obviously interchangeable lenses, you just buy a lens with more zoom on it, or you buy a wide angle lens, stuff like that. I like that, that's something I really, really wanted. Obviously my main focus was video, but the camera is obviously completely capable of photography as well. Uh, it's a camera, it can do photos, but I was mainly looking at it for video. Another big point for me when I was looking for a camera, as well as like the flippy out screen, the 4K video, the interchangeable lenses, I wanted a camera that had a microphone port so that I could plug an external microphone like the one I'm using now in, and be able to record better audio than the camera can pick up. Because generally camera audio isn't gonna be the best. So being able to use a external microphone, whether it be a lapel mic or like I'm using a shotgun mic, being able to plug that in to the camera and the camera record the audio from that microphone rather than having to mix them together, uh, it's a lot easier. So that was a big, big point for me when I was buying the camera. I wanted to have a microphone port. And to be honest, this camera fills pretty much everything I could have asked for from a camera. So. What do I think of the camera overall? Is it worth the money? Is it a good investment? Is it a camera that I recommend that you buy? So to all of those things, I think the answer is yes. I really like the camera. I'm enjoying using it. I think the footage that it produces is really good and really high quality. Obviously you're gonna need to learn uh, the same as me, I'm still learning all the settings and how to produce the image that you want and how to get the right exposure and how to get uh, the best quality image you can without making it grainy and making it too light or too dark. So I'm still learning those things, I'm still working on those things, but that's something important. But I think once you're able to get to grips with those things, you can produce a really good quality image using this camera. There's a small drawback with the camera. Um, when you're recording 4K, I record 4K 25 frames a second when I'm recording 4K with the camera. And the autofocus the speed of the autofocus isn't great. So in a previous video that I did on my YouTube channel where I used this just for the vlog, just for the me talking to camera bit, I had it set on 4K, 25 frames, because I wanted it to be recorded in 4K because I was playing with the new camera and trying it out. And I had the focus set to face detection because I figured that's what I want. I wanted to keep, I'm gonna move in and out and I want it to be able to uh, track me and be able to focus on me. It's very slow at that in 4K. Now this is just in 4K. In 4K it is fairly slow. It's fairly slow at focusing. It's a small problem. Um, it's a little annoying, but if you record in 1080, it's fine. It's completely fast, it's nice, it, it's pretty quick, it's good. So that's not too bad. So what I would say is if you're gonna use 4K generally, you wanna have a stationary subject or you wanna be filming something you want to have, you want to be able to set it. I mean, generally, you're probably going to want to use manual focus if you're actually filming something or a person. You're going to want to try and manual focus it rather than having the autofocus. But obviously, for just me filming myself using the camera, I want to have autofocus because I can't be there to focus it on myself constantly. Um, but if you use 1080 on the camera, 1080 60, 1080 30 frames, whatever you use. Uh, if you're in 1080, it's nice and fast and you can actually set that to record. So I'm not entirely sure how this is going to come out because I am recording this in 4K because I feel like that's the best way to show off a 4K camera is recording 4K. But hopefully this is not too bad, not too out of focus. But when I have used it in 1080, it's very fast at focusing and it's much more effective for doing that. If you want to record something more cinematic or a scene or something, you know, a product, then you're probably gonna to wanna to use 4K and it's fine for that because at that point when you're not filming yourself, you can use manual focus or you can focus your shot and you can figure out how you're gonna do it. Whereas a moving person trying to keep focus on that in 4K, it is a little slow. Sensor on the camera, I believe is a four, four thirds sensor. I'm not entirely sure. If I've got that wrong, I'll annotate it on screen. But basically it's not a full frame. Uh, what does that mean? So basically it crops the image. So, this is as much as I'm aware. I could be completely wrong. If I am wrong, please correct me in the comments. Just try and do it nicely. I'm still learning. Uh, it's me, Colsey, from the future, who is editing this video right now. Uh, so the camera actually ran out of uh, memory at this point, and it took a long while to transfer that memory off of the memory card. So I didn't get to finish what I was saying. 
So I'm gonna briefly just fill you in what I, what I was gonna say. The sensor on the camera is cropped. Now, what does that mean is that it crops the image. It always seems to be compared to a full frame camera. Basically what that means is, so a 25 mil, for example, on a micro four thirds camera like the G7 will equal a 50 mil on a full frame camera. A 50 mil on a full frame camera will look, will have the same, like crop the same view as a 25 mil on a micro four thirds camera like the G7. That's basically what that means. There are some some images on Google. If you just search like uh, camera cropping, it kind of gives you more of a visual aid as to what that basically means. So that's what I was gonna say. Uh, that's pretty much it. Um, like I said, unfortunately the camera ran out. So this is actually recorded on my webcam. Not a bad thing. It means that you can compare the quality of say this although the lighting is better and it's daytime here and I have big lights on, you can compare the quality of the webcam to the quality of the camera that I filmed in in 4K. So, uh, yeah, that's all I wanna say. So uh, you can go back to me in the past and continue watching the video. I managed to pick it up for 450 pounds, like I mentioned, with a spare lens, well, with two lenses, like I mentioned, and a bag, and that was actually a very good price. That's one of the big reasons that I bought it was because I was like, I've been looking at this camera for a month and this is an amazing price for it and I should buy it right now before it goes back up. So in the description I'll have links to where you can go buy this camera if you're interested. Um, but it may not be as cheap as I got it. So keep an eye out for those bargains and you know if you see one that, that looks good um, then you, you might want to jump on it because that's what I did and I'm, to be honest I'm very happy I did that because I ended up with a camera that I really enjoy, a camera that I think films really good quality videos and is future proof for, at least for a little while so that I'll be able to, you know, continue making content and make it uh, to higher quality. Well, what do you know, I'm back again. So, uh, just to finish off the video, I just want to say that I would highly recommend the camera. I think it's a really good camera. And if you want to see some actual, you know, footage, uh, I did mention it in the video, but I have made a more like cinematic style video uh, while I was away, um, which I'll leave a link to in the description where you can go check it out. And that's just pure footage with some music over. Uh, showing you know how the camera films in a, in a different situation and it's also just a kind of video that I wanted to make because it's fun to be more I guess arty and try and make a cinematic looking video so yeah it's a good camera I do recommend it like if you've watched the video to this point then you know you've obviously heard everything I've said so it's up to you whether you want to go buy it what do you think of it um, like I said I'm not claiming to be any like professional filmmaker. I'm still learning a lot of this stuff. Um, so if I have got anything wrong or I misinformed on some of the information, then I apologize and you can correct me in the comments, but you know, try and do it nicely and constructive because like I said, I'm, I'm still learning this and I'm just really enjoying it. But maybe this video is helpful for people who uh, are in a similar situation to me where you're trying to improve your camera, uh, your, your photo or your video quality and your, your skill doing it. So maybe this is a camera that might be good for you. I don't know, I feel like it's been good for me and it's a camera that I like and I enjoy making stuff with and it's a good quality camera. So yes, but I do recommend you go check out the other video where it is purely just footage film with this camera. I had a little bit of a go at color grading it, which is again, something that I haven't really done before with any of my previous cameras. So. Uh, that was a fun experience and I, I'm actually pretty proud with how the video came out. I think it looks really good. Uh, like I said, I'm not, I'm no professional at any of this, but I think the video came out looking good and I think that's the main thing with the video. If it looks good, then that's good enough for me. So anyway, thank you for watching this video. Please remember to like, comment, subscribe if you did enjoy it. And uh, yeah, definitely go check out the other video. Uh, the link is in the description. But thank you guys and I will see you guys next time. I'm not, 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 I'm not,